This is Digital Beers Born. Welcome back for more AP Art History. I recommend buckling up for this one. It's going to get wild. We're looking at the indigenous Americas. Specifically, Mesoamerica. And today we're focusing on Mexico with a site known as Templo Mayor. There are a number of works found at the site, including the Coil Shockey Stone, the Calendar Stone, and this Olmec Mask. Let's start by discussing the context. The site of Templo Mayor is what is in currently Mexico City. Mexico City is the capital of Mexico. But before it was Mexico City, it was the city of Tenochtitlan. Founded in 1325, Tenochtitlan was the capital of the Aztec Empire. The Aztecs ruled this part of Mesoamerica from 1300 to 1521 CE. And right at the center of their capital city was Templo Mayor. Now, in the 14th century, the Aztecs were conquered by the Spanish, and eventually Tenochtitlan would become Mexico City. Many of the ruins of Aztec landmarks are buried underneath that city. This, for example, was the original location of Templo Mayor. Its ruins were rediscovered when construction workers stumbled upon Aztec artifacts while digging a pit. Now let's take a look at the formal qualities of this temple. At its peak, Templo Mayor would have stood about 90 feet tall, made of stone covered in stucco. Its structure is roughly pyramid-shaped. This lower portion was solid stone. If you look at this image, we see a part that's been cut away to show a structure underneath. That is perhaps a little confusing. Templo Mayor was originally made at a smaller scale, but as the population of Tenochtitlan grew, it was replaced with a larger version of the same structure built right over the top of the smaller one. So we see a smaller Templo Mayor inside. But you are not intended to enter this lower portion. It is a solid stone base. If you remember the ziggurat that we took a look at in the Mesopotamian chapter, the White Temple of Uruk, it was a solid base to raise the cella closer to the heavens. This is a similar idea. This pyramid shape is simply a platform on which to uh, build the cellas that we see here at the peak. The cellas are the actual sacred spaces of the temple. It's here that the high priests would enter to practice their rituals and worship the gods. Now let's take a look at the function of Templo Mayor. As I mentioned, there are two cellas here. Each is dedicated to a different god. The cella that we see over here on the left was dedicated to Tlaloc, the Aztec god of water. The cella that we see on the right was dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, the Aztec god of fire. Huitzilopochtli is one of the most important gods in the Aztec religion. He is one of the patron gods of the Aztec people. Now at the base of the main staircase in Templo Mayor would have originally been found a large circular stone mounted into the ground. The stone was covered in relief sculpture. It's known as the Coil Shockey Stone. And what it depicts is the Aztec goddess of the moon, Coil Shockey. Or more specifically, what we see is Coil Shockey's dead body. If you look closely, we see her torso here in the middle, but her arms and her legs are all detached from her body. We see bone and blood coming out of the stumps and her head is decapitated. So at the base of Templo Mayor, we see a large stone depiction of the corpse of a goddess. 
Now the reason for this is because it ties into the larger mythology of Aztec gods. In Aztec religion, all gods, Coyoshaki, uh, Huitzilopochtli, Tlaloc, they're all born from the same mother. Her name was Kualikyu, the mother of the gods. Now before Huitzilopochtli is born, Koyoshaki is the strongest of all the children. Kualikyu has had 400 babies, they are 399 sons and one daughter. Koyoshaki is the only daughter and she is the leader of them all. But every time another baby is born, that's just more competition for Koyoshaki. So she says enough is enough. She doesn't want any more brothers and sisters to be born. So she tells her mother, no more. Now, in the mythology, the way that Kualikyu is impregnated is that a feather that's blowing on the wind happens to blow up her skirt and it somehow puts a baby in her, just like in real life. Now that baby from that feather is Huitzilopochtli. When that happens, Koyoshaki is furious. She's like, no more babies, each one represents more competition for her. So she decides that she has to take drastic action. Koyoshaki is going to climb to the top of the mountain where Kualikyu lives and she's going to kill her. Coil Shaki is going to kill her own mother to put a stop to all these babies. So when she gets up there, she's about to kill her mother when Huitzilopochtli emerges from Kualikyu, ready to defend his mom. His first action as a tiny little baby just newly born is to fight his sister to the death to protect his mother. Now what Huitzilopochtli does is he cuts off Coil Shaki's head and he takes her body and he throws it off of the mountaintop. Her body tumbles down the mountain and when it hits the ground, her arms and legs explode off of her body with the force of the fall. The Coil Shaki Stone depicts Coil Shaki's corpse after having been defeated by Huitzilopochtli. And in fact, the Aztecs believe that the cycle between day and night was a reenactment of that event. Coil Shaki was the goddess of the moon. Huitzilopochtli is the god of fire represented by the sun. Every morning when the moon falls and the sun rises, the Aztecs believe that that was because of Huitzilopochtli defeating his sister Coil Shaki. Now in Aztec culture, they practiced human sacrifice. There are many Aztec rituals that required an Aztec priest to kill a human as part of the ritual. At Templo Mayor, they would honor this event and honor Huitzilopochtli by taking a human captive, cutting off their head, and throwing them down the 90 feet of stone steps on Templo Mayor. When their corpse landed at the base, it would land on the Coil Shaki stone covering it in the blood of the human sacrifice. The Aztecs believe that this ritual was important in ensuring the cycle of day and night would continue. In addition to the Coil Shaki Stone, we also find this at Templo Mayor. This is known as the Calendar Stone, sometimes referred to as the Sun Stone. This is also a large circular stone relief sculpture. And like the Coil Shaki Stone, this was most likely used as part of human sacrifice rituals. The belief is that this would have been mounted in the ground as an altar, and the human sacrifice would have been killed on top of it so that their blood would flow into the sculpture. Now the sculpture itself is comprised of a set of rings. In the center we have a depiction of a deity. This is Tonatia, the Aztec god of the sun. The Aztecs believed that the God of the Sun was fueled through human sacrifice. We see Tanatia's face in the center. On the left and the right are his clawed hands, each holding a human heart. In the rings surrounding Tanatia are symbols that represent the four eras of existence. The Aztecs believed that the world existed in a cyclical nature and at the end of every era, the earth was destroyed and born again. The symbols that we have here represent the thing that destroyed the earth at the end of each era. 
On the top right, we see a depiction of a monstrous jaguar head to represent that the end of the first era came with the world being overrun by monstrous creatures. On the top left, we see a symbol depicting a serpent that represents wind. The belief is that the second era, the earth was destroyed through tornadoes and hurricanes. The third symbol represents rain, in which the earth was destroyed through catastrophic storms. And the fourth, in which the earth was destroyed by massive flooding of the oceans. So we have the deity in the center, the four eras of existence in the ring surrounding that. In the third ring, we see a depiction of a 20-day calendar. One of the reasons why this is called the calendar stone is because the symbols on it represent a way of representing the passage of time, an organizational system, in the same way that we have a 30-day calendar uh, in our culture, they had a similar system based on a 20-day calendar, each represented here through a separate symbol. The outer ring represents a 52-year cycle. Similar to the way in which we use 10 years grouped into a decade to represent the passage of time in our culture, they organized their system into 52-year cycles. This is also known as the sunstone because in addition to the sun deity in the center, we see these triangular rays of light emanating out from the middle, reminiscent of the rays of a sun. These triangular shapes also aligned with the cardinal directions of the compass, north, south, east, and west. So at Templo Mayor, we have both the calendar stone and the coil shaki stone, large relief sculptures used in the practice of human sacrifice. Now the final artifact we're going to take a look at from Templo Mayor is this. This is known as the Olmec Mask. This object was found buried at the base of Templo Mayor. It was found with a collection of many other valuable objects. There's ceramic sculpture, um, obsidian knives, other kinds of stone and metal sculpture buried in one specific location. But this object stands out. It's only about four inches tall, but it's made of jade. And if you remember when we talked about the jade song from China, jade is a valuable stone that's very difficult to work with. Typically things made out of jade are of great cultural importance. But what makes this piece so specifically distinct is that it was not made by the Aztecs. But instead, this is a sculpture made by an earlier civilization known as the Olmec. The Olmec culture ruled this part of Mesoamerica from about 1200 to 400 BCE. Now, if we look at that timeline, the Olmec ended in 400 BCE, but the Aztecs didn't begin until 1300 CE. That's a difference of 1700 years. That difference is the equivalent of us today looking back at the ancient Roman period. So why do the Aztecs have an Olmec mask? And why was it found buried at the base of Templo Mayor? The assumption is that these objects were buried there as an offering. They're considered valuable objects by the Aztec culture, and they were sacrificing them to the Aztec gods by burying them at the foot of the temple. What that shows us is that the Aztecs had a high respect, a reverence for the Olmec, and they would have treasured Olmec objects like this to the degree that by burying them at the foot of the temple, it would have been a massive sacrifice to honor the gods. It also gives us some insight into Olmec art as well. The distinctive features of Olmec art are the upturned lips that we see on the facial features. I think it's also worth noting how representational this sculpture is from something that dates to probably about you know, somewhere in the 5th century BCE or earlier. This is a surprisingly representational depiction of the human face. And 
and that is the architectural site of the Aztec Templo Mayor. 